Good morning. Thank you. Yeah, um, how many of you in the audience have a geek in the family? Not are the geek, but have or know a geek in the family, right? Well, um, my dad is, uh, definitely qualifies as a geek. He, his generation was promised flying cars. And uh, they said they'd have them by the year 2000. He's always been genuinely frustrated that we don't have flying cars yet. Um, but what we do have is a uh, re very rich, complex set of air travel, right? Uh, at any given day, there are 100,000 flights approximately. Uh, there are approximately 10,000 flights in the air at any given moment, carrying 1.2 million passengers. That's about the population of Cyprus or Estonia, the countries. So literally a, a small country in the air at any given moment. In college, I used to uh, really enjoy philosophy. I enjoyed asking big, impossible questions, questions that didn't have answers. And along the way, in exploring our reality, you'd find answers to smaller, important questions, right? You wouldn't answer the big question, but you'd find smaller questions. So is this community, are you challenging yourselves with impossible questions? Are you exploring your reality and challenging your reality so that you can come up with those new innovations over time? American Airlines has faced a number of seemingly impossible questions. How to build the first and biggest airline loyalty system that was ever created, the Advantage system. Uh, how will the largest airline merger in history work? And we successfully pulled that off. How will we grow into the largest and greatest airline in the world? That's an ongoing question. How will we overcome these ongoing airline challenges, the industry challenges? And how can we take a leap of faith that airlines can be profitable year over year? To give you an idea of scale, uh, American Airlines serves approximately half a million passengers every day. We do this with 130,000 employees. We go to 50 countries, 350 destinations, and we have 6,700 flights every day. Organizational and digital transformations at this scale can seem like impossible questions. At one point for all of us, uh, about 10 to 13 years ago, a cloud strategy seemed like an impossible question, right? An open source cloud platform seemed like an impossible idea, but 10 years ago, Project B29 at VMware got started and Cloud Foundry was born. So how do we choose something like Cloud Foundry as a cloud platform? American Airlines is no stranger to a cloud strategy, right? It's literally what we do. It's our job to take you to the clouds and back. Now, all kidding aside, uh, we chose a hybrid multi-cloud strategy. So we asked teams to classify their workloads and we have a set of criteria, and they choose their cloud target that makes the most sense for their systems. Pretty basic. Uh, in, in choosing those, who is going to manage and run that platform, specifically Cloud Foundry? So we've worked extensively with Pivotal, with IBM Cloud, uh, in implementing their products and using their expertise. And we want to thank them for, for working with that. When, when I began Cloud Foundry, I had one impossible question in my mind. And the question was this, could we do this? Could we CF push airline? It's a fairly unreasonable, impossible question. Uh, but the important thing is the innovation that you get along the way. So what we learned is that Cloud Foundry definitely fulfills cloud native principles. It enables speed and agility. It supports a culture of automation. It provides an open source abstraction to implementation. And it has a simple API to learn and use. We've had a number of successes on the platform. So we've built private and de dedicated and public instances. The private and dedicated instances allow teams to make small incremental steps towards cloud and not a binary choice of on-premise or public cloud. Uh, we've migrated our social support systems. If you interact with American Airlines via Twitter, you're probably interacting with us through Cloud Foundry. 
130,000 employees and their dependents get their explanation of benefits and uh, their enrollment every year through uh, our cloud. And customers have more choices for booking, uh, voluntary rebooking and involuntary rebooking through Cloud Foundry than ever before. And we have many, many more success stories just like this. So if this were a retrospective, that's what we did well. And that's what you as a community and as a product did well on our behalf. And we thank you for that. So what are our opportunities? Uh, you've heard a little bit about this already. Um, logging at scale is uh, something we were losing log entries, too many log entries. Um, you may say that that's an implementation issue. We just ask that you look at it uh, as a user. It, it has been a problem for us. Application security, system to system security. Uh, I think that's improving over time, but what would it look like for something like uh, Keycloak, OAuth, um, even these thing, projects around Envoy, Pilot, uh, what would it look like to bake that into the platform? Compliance, what if GDPR, uh, PCI is an example, what if they were baked into the software platform instead of delegating those to infrastructure and implementation? What if they were first class citizens? Build packs, uh, thank you Ben uh, for demoing the progress on build packs because frankly they've been complex and uh, hopefully this will simplify the world. So these all seem fairly, they're important, but they're fairly trivial in the overall Cloud Foundry strategy. So what's next? 500 years ago, we believed that Earth was the center of the universe. Uh, Aristotle believed that Earth was the center of the universe 2,000 years ago. So what do you believe? Uh, what do your users believe? What does the community believe? Is Cloud Foundry the platform as a service, the center? Uh, vendors are always going to have platform-specific um, platform technology that gives you vendor lock-in, right? What would it look like if the vendor was the center of the platform world and these tools revolved around it? What would it look like if Kubernetes or Istio were the center of the world? And I think with projects like Irene, you're actually asking those questions. These are big questions. These are seemingly impossible questions, and they'll lead to innovation. So we need you to dream big. We need you to challenge your preconceptions, your assumptions, your expectations. We need you to ask the big impossible questions. And when you do, you'll change the future for all of us, and it'll be better. We thank you for that.